When you pay attention to the periodic table, right at the tippity top you have two elements, number one and number two. And these two are the most common elements in the universe. So of course, they were the very first elements that appeared after the Big Bang. Alongside that, they're very simple and light. In number one we have hydrogen, which we've made a video on. And right across the table you have number two, helium, which this video is about. If you've seen our clip about hydrogen, you know that it's the most common element in the universe, and you can find a lot of it on planet Earth. But you can't say the same thing about helium. It's extremely common in the universe, but it's very rare here on Earth, and most of it has to do with its weight. You might know helium just based on party balloons, and the reason they lift up is because they're lighter than air, and they want to continue moving up it's like when you put something light at the bottom of the sea and it just wants to float up. That's the same thing with helium. But if you put hydrogen, this is what happens. In the 1930s, the Germans created an airship that was the biggest in history called the Hindenburg. At first, the way it was engineered was to have helium inside it so it can flow mid-air. But it was going to be very expensive and extremely difficult to get all that helium. So they decided to go with the second but worst option, hydrogen. And because of this huge mistake, this is the reason the Hindenburg burned down and it got the name the Air Titanic. The way we're speaking about helium, you probably think that it's only used for airships and balloons, but that's not the case. Before we get too into it, let's get to the history of it. Since helium was mainly in gas form, humans never really discovered it until the 20th century when two Swedish scientists by the name of Per Theodor Kleff and Abraham Langlet discovered that this is a gas and we have it on earth and it's not only on the sun. And also in the same era they figure out that helium could be found next to natural gas deposits. And since they were in the United States, the first country that figured out how to capture helium properly was the United States. You could basically say anywhere that there's natural gas, you can find helium. Right now, the largest producers of helium in the world that make up more than 80% of it is the US and Qatar. And the reason Qatar is up there is because they share a massive gas field with Iran. And this massive gas field is called the South Pars and it's the biggest in the world. The first people that used this gas and tried to experiment with it were the Americans. And this was in the beginning of the 20th century when there is a whole lot of airplanes being invented and made. And they're pretty much trying out everything. Once the engineers and scientists realized that helium is lighter than air, they first thought to themselves that we can use this gas to fly. And indeed they were right because they started pumping them into airships and balloons and started flying everywhere. At that time only the Americans knew how to control and capture this gas, which is the main reason that Hindenburg did not have helium. They hadn't figured out how to capture helium properly and they were forced to buy it from the US if they went that route. But they decided to go with hydrogen, which was a huge mistake. This was the beginning of this gas. But as you move forward, the rest of the world figures out how helium is captured. And they start capturing it as well. But the number one reservoir was still in Texas. Back in the day, helium was most importantly for flying. But nowadays, it's completely different. Nowadays, you can inhale helium and make funny noises. Now, Lori has... And then you go ahead and you talk like this and you go ahead and you take yeah, it like this. this. But this is a joke because people have been doing this for more than 100 years now. But in serious terms, helium has a very important use. One of those uses is cooling. What's an important machine in hospitals? The MRI machine, which uses magnets to scan, not x-ray. And all those components moving around inside the machine create a lot of heat and they need liquid helium to cool off. Yes, we said liquid helium, not helium gas. Liquid helium is probably the coldest liquid in the universe. It's so dang cold that you cannot make helium into a solid. If you've seen our video about liquid nitrogen, you completely know what I'm talking about. An extremely cold liquid 
that comes from nitrogen and it's mainly used in laboratories and other cooling systems. But when you compare it to liquid helium, they don't even compare and they don't come close in terms of temperature because liquid nitrogen is minus 196 degrees Celsius. That's pretty damn cold, right? But just like we said, it doesn't even come close to helium because helium hovers around minus 269 degrees Celsius, which is very close to absolute zero. Another important industry that liquid helium is important is in the microchip and semiconductor industry, where all these modern machines get more advanced and more advanced, and they have more moving components moving faster. So they need an insane cooling system to keep the machine working at high performance. Sure, they can slow these machines down and use other cooling systems to make it work, but it's gonna take a lot longer to produce something that would take one day. So the cooling system is very important and it should work properly. But since we're saying all this, the more we move forward, the higher the demand for helium is becoming because all these machines are getting more and more advanced every day. And when you have more moving parts that are more complicated and they're moving faster, they need a better cooling system. It gets to a point where water is not enough to cool something down. This is when we're in a pickle now because the demand is getting higher and higher and the less helium we have accessible to us. So it's becoming a rare gas. Some experts say if we use helium like we are today, we are not even going to last until the next 100 years. But if we look towards the sky, we see a massive planet called Jupiter. Jupiter is a massive gas giant and it has all types of gas in it. But one gas that's very common in it is helium. This planet has more helium inside it than the entire size of Earth but you could fit 1300 Earths inside Jupiter. But inside the solar system, Jupiter is not the one that has the most helium. Every day you see a lot of helium and that's called the sun. 27.5% of the sun is made up of helium, while the rest of it is mainly hydrogen and other gases. That leaves one question. If there's so much helium inside the solar system, why is it so rare on Earth? The main reason is that helium is very small, very simple, and of course it's very light, so it easily escapes whenever it has a chance. If you let the gas go, it will continue to rise and literally leave the atmosphere. That's how light it is. So throughout history, all this helium has been escaping planet Earth, but the ones that are here are deep beneath the ground mainly next to natural gas fields. These heliums didn't have anywhere to go, which is why you can extract them now. As you know, if anyone inhales helium, their voice becomes funny. But the question is, why is that? It's because when you inhale this gas, it lowers the vibration inside your voice box, and that makes your voice get higher. That's it. And you should note that helium is actually not bad for you when you inhale it. It's an odorless, tasteless and non-toxic gas. But you have to know that if you inhale it too much, you're basically causing less oxygen to go in your lungs. And if you continue to inhale helium, you're gonna have a problem with the lack of oxygen, not a problem with helium itself. It's also interesting to note that if helium is connected to electricity, they can produce a certain light, like neon. But helium is kind of pink and red. Neon is the most common one and the cheapest way to do it. And it's good to know that you can even do this with mercury vapor, which has a turquoise type color. But you do have to know that mercury vapor is extremely toxic and you should not be messing with it. While neon and helium are not toxic whatsoever. Before I let you guys go, I should tell you that the price of helium is 30 to $70 per kilogram depending on where you're from and what part of the world you're from. Because if in your area there's plenty of helium, like in the United States, it's going to be cheaper than somewhere that barely has any. 